Hey, it's Nate from Navigator Bookkeeping, just with a quick QuickBooks Online how-to video here for you. We're going to talk about prepaid expenses today. Prepaid expenses are a great way to um, show the real cost of something that you're paying annually or quarterly or you know something, one of those longer durations. So insurance is a great example. Um, there's a lot of insurance policies where you pay annually, but then you know you're covered by the insurance throughout the whole year. So instead of having one month with a really high insurance premium and looking like that month had a really high um, amount of expenses and then every other month looking like it's a lot lower, it's a lot nicer to split that expense out by 12 months so that we kind of see the true cost per month um, for that insurance. Another place you might see this is with software. Um, there's a lot of software companies that will give you a discount if you pay annually, right, instead of monthly. Um, so if you pay that annually, get the savings, but then you're using that software throughout the whole year. So it's nice to see that cost throughout all 12 months. It doesn't have to be 12 months though. If there's something that you pay quarterly, um, you know, twice a year, whatever you wanna do, you can use prepaid expenses for it, which is nice, it's pretty versatile. Um, so we're gonna do this with insurance for this example, but uh, feel free to use this for, for anything that you're kind of getting the benefit of throughout the year, but maybe only paying once or twice a year. So this is some liability insurance we're gonna do here. Um, right now it's in the insurance expense category. So we're gonna switch this to prepaid expenses. Um, which I already created that account. If you ha need to create one, um, it's going to be under uh, current assets. Um, QuickBooks has it preloaded under other current assets. So you can put it under there and uh, name it accordingly. I like to make my prepaid expense accounts somewhat specific. Um, so this one, I'm going to put all my insurance accounts in. If you have a lot of different prepaid expenses happening, it's nice to have them in a couple different prepaid expense accounts because basically what's going to be happening is there's going to be reoccurring journal entries happening for each of these every month, usually. Um, so if you have them all just in one big prepaid expense account, sometimes it can get a little confusing because there's all these different journal entries kind of all happening. Sometimes a little difficult to know which amount is going to which transaction. So um, if you can kind of make a couple subcategories, that's easier. On the other hand, if you're only going to have, you know, one or two things you're going to put in prepaid expenses, just put them in one one prepaid expense account, and that's not a big deal. Um, it is an asset account, which might seem a little confusing. You're putting an expense into an asset account. But, I mean, basically what's happening is you've prepaid for that expense, but you're, you you haven't used that expense up yet. So it's an asset because it's it's something you haven't used yet. It's slowly going to get depleted throughout the year. Um, so, yeah, so we're going to save and close this. This is going into prepaid expenses, and then we're going to hop over to there and look at that account. All right, so we put that transaction into prepaid expenses here. Let me actually just refresh the page quick. All right, so you see it down here, 562, liability insurance. Now, what we need to do is, is we're going to split this 562 into 12 payments. Uh, payments is not the right word because we're not paying, we've already paid. Uh, 12 sections, right, to, to show that expense monthly. Um, I did this math already, but 562 divided by 12 is 4683. So that's what these guys are over here. But basically what we're going to do now that we know kind of the monthly cost, right, 4683, is we're going to create a journal entry for each of those. So let me show you, show you that journal entry. So your next step is you're going to create a journal entry. Like I said, um, I created it already just to save you some time in this video. But basically your first journal entry for the prepaid expense is going to be in the same amount, same month that you paid for that, um, that prepaid expense. So they paid in October for this insurance. So I just set the date as 1031. Um, probably, you know, I don't, I don't remember exactly what the date was, maybe 1025 for that one, but you could you could set it on the exact date. I don't think in my mind it makes a huge difference if you're a couple of days here or there on that one. But uh, set the date to be in the same month that you, you made the initial purchase, name it, the journal entry, and then you're crediting uh, the current asset account, prepaid expenses for the amount, and then you're debiting the insurance. So basically your asset is going to decrease every month and your expense is going to increase every month as you kind of use up this expense. So that's what the journal entry is going to look like. Okay. So we're going to create this for the first, first month. And then the important thing that you're going to need to do is you're going to actually make this journal entry reoccurring so that it's automatically getting created every month for you. So we're going to click this make reoccurring button down here. All right. So the reoccurring journal entry button will look, or the page will look something like this. You're going to name the template. So prepaid liability insurance, and you're going to set when you want the journal entry to be created. Um, so I'm just saying monthly on the last day of every month. And then it should copy the journal entry, the original one that you made. Now, one important thing to notice is you can only do reoccurring journal entries for the future. So I can't go back and say, I want this to be done in the past. Um, I need to have it set to go for the future. So today is January 9. 
I'm setting this to start January 31, and it's just going to happen the last day of every month for nine more months. All right, so that's all fine. But what you might notice is that I made my first one in October, but I made this one starting in January. So I'm missing November and December. So I actually need to go back and um, uh, manually create the other two months. So you'll see here, I have the two months in here already created. Um, basically what I did is I just copied the initial um, journal entry just to do those. I'll actually show you how to do that real quick here. So this is my initial journal entry. All you have to do here is you just click copy and then it'll create a new one. And then you just um, will change the date, make sure the name is good and then go from there. And that will let you copy your journal entry. super easy. So those are copied. My reoccurring journal entry is set up. So basically just to s summarize now, uh, we paid in October, October 25, 1025 uh, for 562 made the initial journal entry for the first uh, one twelfth of that cost. And then we have three more or two others in here. So now we have three months, so we're caught up. And then in the future, we're going to have um, a reoccurring one just automatically happening every last day of the month, all the way through September when the policy has completed and they'll pay again in, in the next October. Um, the great thing with reoccurring journal entries is you don't have to do anything with them. Once, once they're set, they just go and just keep running. Um, so as long as you've kind of set the parameters correctly and for it to run the correct amount of time, uh, makes it super easy. Um, if you ever need to look at your reoccurring, uh, journal entries, I'll show you where to go for that. You're going to click the gear icon over here. And then under the gear icon, you'll see reoccurring transactions. If you click reoccurring transactions, this is where we are. Um, and you can just see here. All right. We have our liability insurance. It's scheduled every month. The next date is 131. And it says the amount is zero because basically it's just shifting between prepaid expenses and insurance. So there's not money being added or taken away. It's just kind of shifting where it is. Um, but yeah, that'll cover our prepaid expenses. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know if you have any questions. You can leave those in the comments here. Um, and yeah, hopefully it's a helpful, helpful little tutorial here. Thanks.